Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, my brethren, let us read today from the book of Judges, chapter 10, and verse 6. The book of Judges, chapter 10, and verse 6. Then the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served the Baals and the Ashtoreths, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the people of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines, and they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. So the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the people of Ammon. From that year they harassed and oppressed the children of Israel for eighteen years. All the children of Israel who were on the other side of the Jordan and the land of the Amorites in Gilead. Moreover, the people of Ammon crossed over the Jordan to fight against Judah also, against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was severely distressed. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you, because we have both forsaken our God and served the Baals. <coughs> so the Lord said to the children of Israel, Did I not deliver you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, and from the people of Ammon, and from the Philistines? Also the Sidonians and the Amalekites and Maonites oppressed you. And you cried out to me, and I delivered you from their hand. Yet you have forsaken me, and have served other gods. Therefore, I will deliver you no more. Go cry out to the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in your time of distress. And the children of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do to us whatever seems best to you. Only deliver us this day we pray. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord, and his soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel. Then the people of Ammon gathered together and encamped in Gilead, and the children of Israel assembled together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people, the leaders of Gilead, said to one another, who is the man who will begin to fight against the people of Ammon? He said, He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Now Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor, but he was the son of a harlot, and Gilead begot Jephthah. Gilead's wife bore sons, and when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah out, saying to him, You shall not, you have no inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. <coughs> then Jephthah, Jephthah fled from his brothers and dwelt in the land of Tob. And worthless men banded together with Jephthah and went out raiding with him. It came to pass after a time that the people of Ammon made war against Israel. So it was when the people of Ammon made war against Israel that the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of Tob. And they said to Jephthah, Come and be our commander, that we may fight against the people of Ammon. Amen. It is during this dispensation of the judges. It lasted around 250 years, from 1425 BC approximately, when Joshua died, to 1150 approximately, when the last judge, Samuel, um, established Saul as the king of Israel for the first time. It was a period where the people of God ought to have been blessed and happy and joyful and glorious 
because they found grace in the eyes of God. God delivered them from the afflictions of Egypt with signs, wonders, and great things. He delivered them, but not only did He deliver him from the affliction of Egypt, but He transferred him, as He had promised to His fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, to a land that flows with milk and honey. So, one people, that God has chosen them, a people that God has loved them and delivered them, a people that God has led in a wondrous way since for 40 years He sanctified them through the trials in the course of uh, the wilderness. They found themselves in the land of their promise the land of the promise that God had given His people, and indeed a land that was rich, glorious, flowing with milk and honey, as had been promised, which He gave to them as He gave them powers, and He destroyed all the enemies. And He gave them the law, heavenly law, so that they may know how to walk, what they must do and what they must not do. And furthermore, He was with them in every difficulty of theirs, when, of the people. He, God never left them alone, defenseless, unprotected, without instructions, without direction, without His Word, without His presence. So this was a people that ought to have been especially blessed, joyful, happy, exactly as every one of us that the Lord, God the Father, revealed to us the person of Jesus of Nazareth, that He is the Son of the living God. <coughs> and by our faith, and not by the works of our righteousness, He regenerated us esteeming us as righteous, and He added us to our own land of promise, to the Church of Christ, which is the body of Christ, whose head is Jesus Christ Himself, power as the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth, a Church regarding which God promised through Jesus Christ, I will not leave you nor forsake you, all the days of your life until the end of the ages. So as the people back then, so also we today, in our own land of promise, we ought to enjoy the grace and the mercy and the blessing and the glory and all the promises that God had given them for the people of Israel if, he said, he said, if with diligence you worship me and you serve me and obey me, then I and all things will bless you, you'll be blessed, and no one will come up against you. And indeed, based on the promise with oath that God gave to Abraham, Say, by saying to him, and blessing, I will bless you with all certainty, that is. In multiplying, I will multiply your descendants, and your seed will rule the gates of his enemies. But this people, in these 250 years after the death of Joshua, And after the fact that all the promises of God, God fulfilled them and His people, this people, in a very strange way, came to situations where there was great unease and weary. Great unease. 
They came into situations where God did not want, nor did the people want it, God forbid. <clears throat> but unfortunately, these things happen. And now it is not, my dear brethren, for us to discern the reason why. We know why. The Word of God tells us why. They again, people of Israel again, did evil in the sight of the Lord. They abandoned the Lord their God, in reality abandoning His Word, His commands, the prayers and the worship that they owe to God, their benedictor. And in a strange way, they followed false gods. The gods of the nations which they overcame, they vanquished with the help of their God. And this is so curious. This did not happen once. It happened repeatedly in the same way. And the question is why? What is happening with the person, with the people of God, that, well, the sensible thing would be for them to enjoy at every moment? the favor and indeed the special favor of God. They live in affliction and unease. And the answer is one and there can be none other. With all diligence keep your heart my son for out of it spring forth all the issues of your life. And what heart? The heart that is deceiving above all things and desperately wicked. And of course, the big question now is, there again, in uneasiness, what will they do? How will they re bounce back? But the most important thing is how will they not fall into the same tragic situations again that lead them to this uneasiness, this difficulty. When the people of Israel saw the tragic state in which they were because all the vanquished enemies of theirs that they had beaten already rose up against them and now they were very mighty in the, in the sight of Israel, not that they became strong, but the people of Israel lost their strength, and their strength is God, which they abandoned by following their opinions, their thoughts, they followed other gods, their imagination, they followed other men, other doctrines, other words. When once again they arrived at this great uneasiness, this, this uncomfortable state, again they repent and they return to God. And they cry to God. We have sinned against you. We have committed what is evil against you. We have abandoned, we have sinned. We chose other gods. We followed a different path. In other words, they have understanding the reason why, of the reason why these evil things happened in their life. And this, this is very important. They understand why. They came into this great uneasiness. And this is very important. This is good. 
because they may have not have understood a thing. As a lot later, kings did what was wicked before God and they hadn't realized that they were doing it. Even David did what was dishon dishonorable before God and disgusting and if Laban had not come to wake him up, he would go forward even to, re to the point of coming into great uneasiness without being able <clears throat> to find healing. So these people knew and it is very important for them to examine as they examined they have to examine and search out and realize what is at fault and why this thing is happening very important the result being they cried out to God they repented they returned to God they returned to God and God as he saw the situation as he saw the situation in which they found themselves he got angry and he told them what he had to tell them go and ask for help from the gods that you have chosen to help you and they in a very interesting way persist in seeking help from God <laughs> so what does this mean they humble themselves even further what does they insist mean with understanding that this is the cause of their great evil their transgression is the cause of the evil that has befall them they humble themselves even more and they find grace by God so God has compassion on them and he knows it, and they know it he has complete compassion for them and he knows it and they know it and God did have compassion on them and he decided to help them but now the question is how now a man has to be found how did God help people and them having so they can have everlasting life he had to find one person and he found Jesus of Nazareth one person and indeed Jeremiah the prophet says when in Jerusalem evil times came and difficulties he says with a prophetic word by the Holy Spirit pass through the roads of Jerusalem and search and find in, in the squares whether you can find one man one man who commits and does the righteousness of God one man who seeks the truth one man one man that has made the decision to do the righteousness of God and what is the righteousness of God the Word of God the commands of God in other words that he keep the Word of God one man and that he seek constantly pursue the truth constantly God doesn't want anything else God will do everything else himself he wants one man that will have two characteristics he has made the decision he had made steadfast decisions to do the will of God as it is described only through the gospel of Christ <coughs> in what way by seeking with all his heart seeking the truth with all his heart and one is the truth your word father is the truth as Christ describes 
Nothing else is needed and no other characteristic does God need in order to act wondrously in his people except one man with these characteristics. That he make the decision to do the truth and that he constantly seek through the gospel of Christ the truth so that he may do it. The righteousness of God. This man must not be special in any way. Indeed, in the specific condition, Jephthah was found. He was a man, a son of a harlot. And a man that was completely despised by his brothers, which not only rejected him, but they drove him away from among them because he was the son of another woman. Now look at this, my dear brethren. Those who drove him out, those who drove out their brother were the ones who sinned and they brought the calamity. Possibly he did as well. But God acts and works in ways that we cannot realize. But the message today is and I believe that it's very important. One question. Do you want to be one of those that God uses for the salvation of his people, of his children? It's easy. It's not difficult. We can say no. We can say yes and not give importance to it, we'll be forgetful listeners, we may say yes. And this yes, to have no reflection, have no truth, but we can say yes today by examining and searching out our own selves and our daily life at this moment to see whether we are or want to be and may God help us to seek God so we can become this so we can become one of these people have made the decision to do the will of God the righteousness of God how? by seeking it through the truth of the word nothing else Even if you're the smallest and the least, if the most despised, the pursued, the persecuted, whatever may happen, whatever may be done, whatever may be going on, if we make the decision today, today, why? Because it is a sure thing that in our environment there are many people who have come into difficulty because of their transgression and their iniquity, because of their sins. And we see this. And indeed, they may be good people, but they are out of the gospel of Christ. They are out of the righteousness of God. It is not a matter for him to be a good man. It is not an issue for him to be driven out. What matters is how do I listen to the Word of God today? Do I listen to the Word of God and my heart is stirred up? in saying, I have found the solution for my environment. I have found the path, not only for my own salvation, but for the salvation of all those who are next to me. <coughs> and indeed, 
even if, and this is very probable, even if I were among them, who along with everyone else did what was wicked before God. This doesn't matter at all. What matters is today, now that we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, what are we thinking of? And what are we intending from here on to correct? What from here on are we intending to change and do and act? <clears throat> so the issue is completely personal and it has nothing to do with the uh, things that I heard until now, that I spoke until now, that I saw until now. Because this man, Jephthah, as they drove his brethren away, could not have had, could not have, he must have had complaints in his heart, indignation, anger. I don't know if he had followed foreign gods, which you cannot see here, but I suppose with all certainty that his heart must have been in a horrible state. Driving me away. They rejected me. They forced me to go to Syria. And being strong in power, I found people who were uh, illegal and abased, and I made a, a gang. So in order to survive in this foreign country away from the people of Israel. But the critical point is not what I have in my heart, what I've done and what I have, how I've been. The question is, what will I do from now on? When? When people came and told him, since they were disappointed by everyone, they came to them and said, will you help us fight the sons of Ammon? So at that moment, something happened. He heard this. He says, my people is in danger. They're asking for help. He could say, of course, ah, get away from me. The way that you've made this, made the mess of this, leave me alone. He may have been even, he may have become afraid because they're asking for him to come and endanger his life for the salvation of those who have abandoned him. It's not a simple thing. He has to be set in order completely. Before God, before brethren, he has to settle his heart. He has to forgive. And in order to forgive, he has to love. And in order to overcome, it is necessary for him to decide to, com to do the righteousness of God in his heart and to seek the instruction of the Holy Spirit, the truth. And God in him found the Savior of that time, the Savior of men. So this is a person who truly forgave and loved, returned to his homeland and he decided to risk his life in order to deliver his brethren who drove him away and his people that ignored him. And the result was that the Holy Spirit came on Jephthah and from there on the work of Jephthah was in the hands of God by the Holy Spirit. And the work of God was taken into the hands of Jephthah by the Holy Spirit again. Now things are easy for him. Even if they're difficult, they're easy. He asked for help from the Ephraimites and the rest of the Jews. Nobody helped him. But it is easy because God is his helper. Because he is full of the Holy Spirit. 
because the Holy Spirit is upon him and truly he lives in the Holy Spirit and in the fire. He no longer lives with his logic, with his heart, with his thoughts, with his disappointments even. He does not live in his loneliness, driven away, but he lives in the presence of God. God was pleased with him. He pleased God. Now he is the appropriate person. Now God has found the next judge for the people of Israel that will save the people of Israel. You see how easy it is, but also how difficult it is. How easy it is for man when he realizes what God wants from him, seeking the truth, that he glorify God. And how easy it is for God when he finds the appropriate person to save and deliver and bless. These are simple things that only the Word of God can reveal to us and teach us and explain to us. He vanquished the Ammonites. But with amazement, he saw later on that the Ephraimites, his brethren, the Israelites, because supposedly he did not ask for their help, they decided today, we will burn your house over your head because you did not come with us. So the evil, it's not the evil that happened from his brothers or for his, from his Ammonites, but now comes greater evil from his brothers from the same race. But God is with him. But God will be glorified in his life and he will glorify Jephthah. He's alone. He was alone. He was with some outlaws. He was a gang. He had a gang. He was exiled. He was driven away. But God was with him. And if God is with you, who can be against you? And the easiest thing as God said, George, the easiest thing that you can do is for God to be with you. There's no easier thing to do. Everything else is difficult. It is impossible for us to achieve it. You cannot manage. <clears throat> and if we also think that we are in these latter days, where there are the birth pangs of a pregnant woman, that wherever you turn your eyes, you see worry, you see fear, you see trouble, despair, failure, complete uneasiness. The easiest thing that you can truly do is that you make God be with you. That's the simplest thing. And if you achieve this, which is very simple for you to achieve, then everything changes. Then, as Paul says, we thank God who makes us always triumph through Jesus Christ. So today, my dear brothers and sisters, this is a very simple question, but an astounding question according to my humble opinion. 
today when, for example, our, our children are giving exams, today when possibly they may not feel very well prepared, today when we hear so many things regarding our country, today that we see so many things happening in the church and around us, today. You can change everything, not only in your personal life, in your family, in your local church, but you can also change everything in every detail that has to do with you and your life. God, may God be with you. So is it so easy? Yes, it is. A prayer from the depths of your heart saying, God, help me. Lay in my heart my, a will to do your will. Make it so that I am willing to do your righteousness. And only that. And help me seek with all my heart which, your righteousness only through your word. Well, from then on, God will take charge of everything. Amen.